Hello and welcome to my crusade. Uh, you guys asked for it, so here it is. Uh, the comments have been very kind, very nice, thank you. And you asked for me to do regular updates on Twitter. So I'm going to try and do an episode a week on here of my crusade. Today we have three topics to talk about. There is the mess of the Conservative Party. There is this unfortunate situation of the protests at the weekend and the clash there. And there's also a very sad story to end on of the UK state ending yet another child's life. Here we go. Hello, welcome to my crusade. I am Father Calvin Robinson. Let's start with Suella Braveman and her being sacked from the Conservative Party because this is a, an utter mess. She was the only Conservative in the Conservative government and they've sacked her because of that. She made some comments predicting the awful mess that we'd see in the protests, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but they're almost saying that her prediction is what caused them, which is foolish. It looks to me like Rishi Sunak has been wanting to get rid of Suella Braveman for a while now, probably because she shows him up because she is conservative and he, he is an utter wet. But, you know, none of us voted for Rishi to be our prime minister. None of us voted for him, it, even in membership of the party. You know, it was a coup d'etat. They got rid of Boris Johnson. They got they thought they'd get Rishi in. Uh, they put him up against whoever they thought he could beat. Uh, they put him up against Liz Truss. And she beat him surprisingly uh they got rid of her and then they shoved him in and it really was a coup it was the bureaucratic technocratic metropolitan liberal elite getting their man in anyway he's been a disgrace he's been awful but what's shocking about this is that she is the only one that appealed to the grassroots if they want to win the election which is impending then they should have some conservative policies and conservative ministers to get rid of suella braveman at this point is just ridiculous it makes me think that they want to lose actually i can't i don't know what motivation it, it, it could be behind this um nadine doris predicted this also she said it looks like suella wants to get sacked so maybe that's part of it who knows maybe suella wants to distance herself from this fallen government which will lose the next election so that she could potentially become leader of the party in opposition and bring the party back to its conservative roots because the conservative party does need to be destroyed to refine its ideology to find what it believes in again because it has been blairite since 2010 really and uh, they knew that that was the only way to get into power but they stuck with it and they haven't done anything conservative since. Immigration is at all-time record highs. They're obsessed with net zero and, and environmental green policies, which actually are to the detriment of normal, hard-working people. And taxes are up. Uh, GDP is, is all over the place. No, nothing is working. They're not protecting our borders. They're not making sure that people get to keep more of the money they earn. They're not doing anything conservative in terms of social issues in addressing the indoctrination that's going on in our schools with trans... Uh, queer theory gender theory critical race theory none of that is being addressed properly so our, we have an entire younger generation that's being indoctrinated to hate our country much like the metropolitan liberal elite do now none of it's looking good but the worst thing is that it's going to get even worse next year when the conservatives lose and they deserve to lose but when labor gets in power all of this is going to be tenfold all of these problems unfortunately Anyway, that's my rant about the Conservative Party. I could talk about that all day, but I won't. I just wanted to address how ridiculous it all seems and mainly to ask you guys, what do you think is going on? Why would Rishi fire the only Conservative in his government? Why would she want to get fired? What's going on there? What is the game plan? Do they want to lose the next election? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, on to the hate marches. Or hate march. So... At the weekend, I did go down into central London and I saw anti-white, anti-British, anti-Christian, anti-Jewish, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas marches. And it was it was sickening to see this in our country. And people will say, you know, it's not pro-Hamas, it's pro-Palestine. No, it was very much pro-Hamas. They were wearing the bandanas, they had the propaganda uh, and the literature, the placards. It was hateful. There were people praising Hitler and there were people calling for the extermination of the Jewish people. Now, in any other time in history, that would have been classed as far right. But of course, these are seen as the, the liberal progressive left. This is, or this is the people that liberal progressive lefties like. They're terrorist sympathizers. There's nothing else to it. And I'm not even putting an argument out here to be whether it's... I'm not making a Zionist argument. 
Now, people can be Zionist or not. That's an, a whole other topic. What I'm talking about here is not only is this a foreign affair, but we're importing foreign conflicts into our land. I'm not speaking up in favour or against Israel at this point in the conversation. I'm speaking up in favour of Great Britain. Now, I went down to the Cenotaph to commemorate our fallen, to pray for our soldiers, for the servicemen and women who have, well, given up their lives for us so that we can live in a free society that we supposedly live in, right? This is something we do every year on Armistice Day and Remembrance Sunday. We remember the dead and we, we thank them and we pray for their souls. This is a good thing. So why was it allowed that this hostile, anti-British protest was taking place on the same day? They've been protesting for weeks now. They, they could protest today or tomorrow. Why did they have to protest at the weekend when this was going on? It's inappropriate and it, it's not right. And then we look at the media coverage. So I was there firsthand. I saw the police kettling the patriots and provoking them. There was a minor scuffle at one point, but that's all the media focused on. That is all they cared about. And I think it was on purpose. It was by design. And then you look at the other hand, end of the stick and, you know, Channels like Channel 4 were saying, uh, you know, it was all peaceful on the Palestinian marches. However, the far-right people at the Cenotaph... No, 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 it wasn't far-right people at the Cenotaph. It was British patriots at the Cenotaph paying their respects. And actually, the Palestinian marches weren't all peaceful. In fact, there were many arrests and there was a lot of hate. It was disgusting. But you'll also see the media twist the truth and, and they, they paint... Well, they just lie. You know, they said, Tommy Robinson called for people to come out, come down to the Cenotaph. And so Calvin Robinson and Lawrence Fox were there. It's like, well, first of all, I went down there because I often go down to the Cenotaph to pay my respects on Armistice Day and or, and or Remembrance Sunday. It's a British tradition. I didn't go down there because Tommy Robinson was there or anyone else for that matter. I didn't even see him. I've never met the guy. Nothing against him, but it, I didn't go down because of him. I went down because of this is my country and I pay respect to the people who've died to keep it this way. And so what they try to do is they lump us all in together. And tr so they try to blame Tommy for the little scuffle that happened when he wasn't even around, right? <laughs> so he paid his respects at the Cenotaph and jumped in a cab and went home. Uh, but the media want to blame him. And I even saw someone on uh, GB News saying it was him that, was th that threw a bottle of alcohol at the police. No, he didn't. I saw that get thrown by a random chap. Tommy Robinson wasn't even there. But the way they, they blame him, and then they try and lump me and, Lawrence and other pe Lawrence and other people in with him, and they try and paint it like we are the bad guys. Why is that? Why, did they, why does the mainstream media, the establishment, why do they hate patriots? Why do they hate people that love our country? Why do they hate our country? This is another question we need to get to the bottom of, because it's, it's not right, it's not okay. What we have here is that Brits go down to celebrate Britain, and that is seen as a negative thing. Muslims go down to, to denigrate Britain, and that's seen as a good thing. What happened to respect and decency? I saw an elderly white couple. They were wearing patriotic pins. I think one of them was a poppy. I don't know what else they had on. But they got into a conflict with a group of Muslims who were being very hostile towards them. And the police interrupted, and they manhandled the elderly white couple, the elderly Brits. And Because it's easier, isn't it, of course, than it is to challenge a group of hostile young Muslim men. It's easier to push around an elderly white man. This is what we're seeing more and more. The police, in their two-tiered policing, I think they're scared. I do think that's what it is. I don't even know if it's orders from on high. I think they are scared, and they are failing to do their duty because of it. Now, on to the most important topic of the day. Indy Gregory. Now, this poor baby Indy Gregory has died... I'm sorry to announce that. This, this was an eight-month-old baby who had a serious illness and she want, her family wanted her to live. They wanted to fight for her life. But yet again, the British state said no. Now, her father, Dean, isn't religious, but he got her baptised, and I love that for her. It's important, and it means she'll be in heaven right now. But he said in his reasoning... When I was in the court, I felt as if hell pulled at me. I thought that if hell exists, then heaven must exist too. I thought that if the devil exists, then God must exist too. I have seen what hell is like, and I want Indy to go to heaven. 
Now this is happening more and more in that people are seeing the evil around us in this world and it's making them realize that if evil exists, goodness exists too. If the devil exists, so does God. And people are thankfully finding God. And I'm, I'm so thankful that Dean found God in the right time for Indy. But the UK government condemned her to death. Now this, this child had Italian citizenship, right? So the Italian government, the Vatican, Giorgio Maloney, the Pope himself, all reached out wanting to help her. The Catholic Church and the Italian state wanted to help this baby with treatment. And the UK government blocked her travel to Italy. Now, they, they even blocked her from going home, to die at home with her family. And in the court order, it was said that she could go home. But the moment that the UK state clocked on that the family might potentially take her to Italy... They prevented her from even going home. So it's, it's about control here. It's not about what's in her best interests. Giorgio Manoni said, They say there isn't much hope for little Indy, but until the end I will do what I can to defend her life and to defend her mum and dad's right to do everything they can for her. That's what a government should be doing. That's how a prime minister should speak. The fact that ours isn't is, is frankly very upsetting. The NHS, the ju judiciary... The government, they are godless, and it shows in the way they treat people. Uh, let's not forget, uh, just a few weeks ago, there was patient ST, a 19-year-old who also was in Britain fighting for her life. The NHS said she had no chance of life, she had no chance of living, and therefore they were going to remove her treatment. And her family said, no, we want her to live, and she said... I'm, I'm a young woman. I'm a young adult. I want to fight to live. I want to die fighting to live. And the doctors said no. They said, you're clearly delusional because you're ignoring our advice. You know, the God complex at play there. And the courts agreed with her medical doctors, even though her psychiatrists uh, or her psychologists said, no, she is, she has, she is compass mentis. She can make her own mind up. And the courts put a gagging order on her. So that we couldn't even address the, the case properly. We couldn't even use her name. We couldn't even ask people to pray for her by name. So we're still praying for the soul of Sudiksha Thormalesh. God rest her soul and please pray for her family too. They didn't win that battle, unfortunately. In the UK, healthcare has become a death cult, to be honest with you. The, the National Health Service has become more important than the lives it's supposed to save because they're obsessed with the price of human life. How much is a human life worth? We have a whole host of doctors and bureaucrats playing God and they obsess about the quality of life. If someone doesn't have what they deem to be a good quality of life, they, they deem their life not worth living. Who is anyone to judge the quality of someone else's life? We still have this baked in our laws. If a family or expecting a baby, if a mother is pregnant and they find out that that baby is going to be disabled in any way, they can kill that baby right up until the moment it's born. You know, if, if your baby has Down syndrome, for example, you can kill that baby a day before it's due to be born. It's legal in this country because we don't value life that we see as less than perfect. That's not right because all life is sacred. And this is what we get when we live in a godless society. We have a warped mortality, and it makes it. We have an evil state. The cult of the NHS is evil. So let's pray for Dean and Claire, the parents of Indy. Let's pray for Indy's soul. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And let us do all we can to turn this around, to convince the state, the judiciary, the doctors, the bureaucrats, that all human life is sacred. They are obsessed with human rights, these abstract ideas from the EU or the UN. Let's start talking about divine rights. Let's talk, start talking about God's law. Let's talk about the fact that we have a right to live and our right to life comes from God himself and no man has a right to take that life away. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. See you next time. Take care.